Let's have a look at some of the best swords that are currently available online for around £150 or $150. Hey folks, Matt Eason here of Scholar Gladiatoria and Eastern Antique Arms. So I've just received an email, I'm looking at right now, uh, from Duncan Callender. And um, he asks, you know, for people who want to get into sword collecting, sword owning, um, but are on a certain budget, what do I think are the best swords currently available online from sellers? Now, he's specifically, I think, asking about the UK, but I'm because I know that most of my audience or a big chunk of my audience are in the USA or buy from the USA, I'm going to look at uh, US sellers and UK sellers. Okay, UK sellers, it's important to know for UK people watching this um, because of our importation and postal issues these days. It, if you can buy in the UK, it's worth buying in the UK. Sometimes there's great savings to be made by buying outside the UK but then you have to deal with um, VAT, tax, um, shipping and handling, these kind of costs, and potentially dealing with getting it past border force, which is not normally a problem with straight blades, incidentally. It's normally only an issue with curved blades. However, if you're buying a curved sword that is being legally sold in the UK, for example, it's traditionally handmade, a katana, for example, then if you buy it in the UK, you know you're never going to have to deal with those border force issues because it's already in the UK. It's already got through the border um, courtesy of the company that's selling it. So I'm going to look at straight and curved swords. I'll just look at swords for now. I should also just briefly mention, if you're on a budget, there are lots of really good weapons that you can get for under £150 or $150. Uh, dollars, for example, daggers, knives, spearheads, this kind of thing, uh, from various different sellers that are underneath that budget. So if you are on a budget, maybe think about starting off with knives and daggers. Even if you want to branch into antiques and militaria, I started out with bayonets. So before I could afford antique swords, I started collecting antique bayonets first. Um, and you know, if you collect for a while and buy and sell, you might find, oh, you've now got enough uh, sword money, as I call it, uh, available to buy your first antique sword, this kind of thing. So let's have a look, uh, and I'm not going to look at antiques today, we're only going to look at replicas, okay? So we're going to look at replicas in the UK, in the US. So we're going to look at some UK sellers first. Obviously some of these items will be available all around the world because they're made in China or India or wherever, um, but I just happen to be looking at British websites to start off with. Um, I'm going to look at the Night Shop, I'm going to look at Southern Swords, I'm going to look at Barrington Swords, and I'm going to look at Blades UK. So first up, I started looking at Hamway. Hamway are a good, relatively budget option um, and pretty known quality and pretty good overall certainly for the price point. Um, the only Japanese Hanway or Japanese style Hanway um, sword I found which is even remotely close to this budget and comes in on the night shop at £173 is the Practical Wakazashi. Um, I have got I've known the practical katana from uh, Hamway. Um, I've used it, cut with it, handled it uh, several times. I've never owned one, but various people I know have. And they're pretty good uh, for the money. Um, so I think, yeah, for £173, the practical wakasashi, I'm a big fan of wakasashis actually, um, that is very good value for money, I think. That's a good option. Though I should mention that it is out of stock here on the night shop. So looking at Hanway's Chinese sword range, um, in the budget group that we're looking at, there are um, practical blunt swords, training swords. I'm just looking at sharp swords uh, for this video. And um, we have got, let's have a look here. You've got, so the practical Gong Fu sword, which is a Dao actually, um, it's uh, it's a 19th century style of Dao that was uh, quite popular, and that's coming in at 100, just under 173 pounds. Uh, I, I do I, I I know that sword, and actually it's a really nice sword, um, and I'd actually really recommend it for this price. Um, I have reviewed one, or maybe I haven't reviewed one, but anyway, I've definitely had one through my hands years ago. Um, I don't have it now. I I think I had one and sold it, but anyway, it's, it's a decent, it's a decent enough sword. The guard has a tendency to come loose and rattle. That's true, unfortunately, of many handways of or the, all handway swords that I've ever known. Um, also, here we've got the so-called Chinese Dadao. Um, it should be mentioned these are all curved incidentally, so if you're in the UK then be aware of the law. Uh, however, these are all traditionally made. Hamway swords are hand forged, they are traditionally made. And this comes in at £127. Uh, and um, both of these are currently out of stock, but when they are in stock, uh, they're pretty good options. Um, so again, 
they are so one's below the budget and one's over the budget personally I don't really like the Chinese Dadao very much I've actually um, I've got to do a review on one of those actually they're okay um, but they're a little bit cheap and nasty to be completely honest uh, out of those two I would definitely recommend spending 50 pounds more and getting the practical Gong Fu sword it's a much nicer sword when it comes to the Hanwei Western swords, uh, really there's there's nothing, um, there's no sharp swords anyway. Uh, there's some blunt training swords which are sort of in this ballpark amount. Um, like for example, the, um, uh, where is it? The I think it's called a practical, where is it? There we go, practical single hand sword and the practical hand and a half sword. They are both for training swords pretty good actually and there's a lot of HEMA people have used those for many years and yes the guards get loose and yes the wooden cores of the grips uh, crack up eventually with these but they do stand up to pretty good use they seem to have pretty good uh, heat treatment um, and fairly decent steel um, however we're not talking about blunt training swords here there are actually quite a lot of blunt training swords you can get in the ballpark of between 150 and 200 pounds but looking at sort of, you know, sharp swords either for cutting or wall hanging um, purposes, um, really uh, there are no Western swords in the Hanway range in this price category um, that I would uh, recommend at all <clears throat> or even available. You really need to get up to about t over £200 really for something that's, you know, kind of halfway decent. And above that, there are some options, you know, there's the Bastard Sword, um, there's the the back sword and the broad sword that, that Hanway do which are a bit overweight but they're not bad swords um, so there are options above 200 pounds but in this price category 150 uh, not really very much available in the um, Hanway line I'm afraid so just when I was starting to despair of any great options um, on the night shop website for in this price range for non blunt swords I found this red dragon combat bastard sword now i've never seen one of these in the flesh um i believe from the um steel classification en 42j that these are made in india in fact i would bet money on the fact that these are made in india i might even have an idea who makes them but um these are red dragon's own brand so these are made uh, for the night shop um and sold with their branding on and look they've got up here we've got nine people have left reviews i won't open the reviews here but that's pretty positive four and a half stars out of nine reviews you know it, on any other portal like amazon or something that would be you know decent it's not a great number of reviews but it's a pretty good review four and a half stars uh, and it's in stock as well and the price is 150 pounds it's incredibly good value um, and they will offer it uh sharpened as well um for i think 12 pounds it looks like so which is nothing really is it so very much in price category that's a long sword it looks like a late 14th century style long sword into the early 15th century uh, so it's relevant to lots of the fencing treatises if you're interested in medieval stuff um, that seems like pretty good value but I, I can't attest to the quality of it myself because I've never handled or seen one or tested one uh, but that seems pretty good um, obviously this is more expensive we're going up to 200 pounds now but this is another option here I suspect again it's red dragon braid blade so I suspect it might be in the same range uh, yes it says the set en 42 J steel so it must be from the same maker I would imagine in India uh, but it looks pretty decent it looks quite inspired by certain swords from kingdom of heaven I have to say I don't think that's any coincidence but looks pretty nice and again sharpening service offered so you can get it blunt or you can get it sharp looks pretty good for that money uh for 200 pounds under 200 pounds um and there's another option here so the red dragon um the red dragon oak shot type 14 sword <laughs> looks pretty nice doesn't it so i recognize that pommel um of a sword from records of the medieval swords so it's sort of inspired by historical originals um, and yeah it looks pretty pretty nice 1.3 kilograms it's perhaps a little bit heavy for its size um, but sharpening service offered 
So yeah, Red Dragon brand, check that. Again, that's £200, so we're well up now from the £150 uh, that we were originally aiming for. But honestly, if you can get to £200 in the UK, it seems like you're getting a lot more options. Um, let's just have a look at that Crusader sword, 1.4 kg. That's, a, that's heavy for its size. I would say that's overweight for its size. Let's have a look at the long sword. Uh, oh, wow, the long sword's really light. That's hilarious. So the long sword, which is longer, is lighter than the other two swords. So on the basis of this, I can see why the long sword's a bestseller. It looks to me, while the two arming swords there look very nice, they're both overweight for their size, I would say. Not like massively historically overweight. You do get some historical swords of that kind of mass. But the longsword seems really light for its size. Uh, and yeah, seems like a really good buy, that longsword, assuming the quality is there. Um, so yeah, well worth looking into. And I've got some other options. There's a Temple Church sword. I don't know this one. I haven't seen this either. So that's a bigger sword. It's heavier with a longer blade. It's got a nice look to it, though. Um, and £195. Again, we're under £200. So good looking 14th century, so that type of sword dates between 1350 and 1400 in general with that large wheel pommel and those uh, flared ends to the cross guard there. So actually a pretty nice sword for, for, the, for the price um, and well worth, well worth checking that out I would say. Um, so it seems like the Red Dragon brand offer, obviously we all use, my club training weapons are these um, Red Dragon synthetic swords that we've had for years and years and they last very well. Um, the Red Dragon brand uses various different manufacturers. It's Red Dragon incidentally is the Night Shop's own brand or the Hema Shop's same thing. Um, and so they're not always going to be of the same quality because they use different manufacturers. But I would say well worth looking into more reviews and trying to get your hands on some of these Red Dragon brand uh, steel swords because they seem pretty damn good value, incredibly good value, um, and they offer sharps and blunts. So I've got through to windless um, options on the night shop and here we've got the Oak Shop Type 14 and I've reviewed this and I've got this sword. In fact, it's undergoing, uh, when, I, <laughs> when I get time here and there, gradually reprofiling the edge and turning it from a secondary bevel to an apple seed edge. Um, this isn't currently available, but it says usually dispatched in four to six weeks. Um, so I have no doubts that they could get hold of that. now. Refer to the previous arming swords we were just looking at. Look at the mass of this, 1.17 kilograms. And this is a good sword, okay? It's just a genuinely good sword by any standards. It's fantastic value for money, I think, at 200 pounds. Um, so yes, this is over the 150 pound budget, but it is genuinely a good sword. And I think even people who have got much higher end swords in their collections, like me, genuinely consider that this is a pretty decent sword um, whether you're using it for reenactment or blunting it for hema or sharpening up and using it for cutting it kind of does all of the above um, so it's a really nice little sword and offers good value for money at 200 pounds so here's a windlass option i have literally never seen before and i didn't know existed until i started looking here it's described as functional arming sword it's not the most awe inspiring name in the world is it functional oh what should we call this new model functional <laughs> it's like a ford prefect um very uninspiring name up your up your game on your naming of swords there but i can't i've never seen one in the flesh but it is windless so i know it's going to be decent st steel and decently um heat treated and so it's a functional sword, as we know. 1.2 kilograms. Well, again, it's lighter than some of those other arming swords. 1.2 kilograms is absolutely fine for an arming sword. It's not particularly long, 76 centimetre blade, but it's not short either. It's kind of average. Yeah, it's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but 95 pounds. So they say limited stock. I'm not entirely sure how limited or what that means, but it is in stock. Um, and it's... Uh, eligible for edge for sharpening as well for 12 pounds more you can get it sharpened that's crazy cheap 95 pounds how's that even possible <laughs> i honestly don't know maybe that's i don't know maybe it was some kind of test model or something i don't know but 95 pounds unlimited stock crazy crazy price 
uh, well worth checking out, I would imagine, at that price. Now, indeed, there's another option here as well, which is called the Functional Viking Sword. <laughs> what is with this functional? Um, and again, this is windless, so you know it's going to be pretty decent steel, 1080 steel, a standard. They pretty much use 1080 for everything, as far as I know. Um, and as you know, I've been working with, with windless for a while. I think literally they use 1080 for everything. Um, the heat treatment is good. I have never had a single issue with any of the windless um, swords in terms of heat treatment that I have had. Um, and this is a Viking era sword. So it's a, what's come, sometimes known as a cocked hat pommel, uh, but a long cross guard. So this is more kind of like very late Viking. This is 11th century. So uh, let's say this is more like kind of Battle of Hastings era, Stamford Bridge. So yes, technically there's still Vikings then, but it's late Viking. Um, and you could argue these long cross guards, they do start to appear, I suppose, in the late 10th century, in the late 900s, but really they're more a thing of the 11th century. But nevertheless, one kilogram. I mean, that, so it's light, it's sharpenable for 12 pounds extra, 95 pounds. That is seriously, seriously cheap. Uh, I don't even know how that's possible. I'm tempted to order one right now. Oh, it's out of st no new stock coming soon. Oh, that's interesting. So it's it is out of stock, but new stock coming soon. Um, wow. I mean, all I can say is amazing value. Check that out on the night shop um, right now, um, and and maybe pre-order one because they've got pre-order available. Uh, fantastic option, I would say, for for those on a budget. And we've got yet another option here: the functional Crusader sword. They I really need to sort that naming out. If they called it practical or I don't know there must be better words than functional functional is an awful word but anyway uh, limited stock this one's sold out no longer available but uh, again as I said for the others it's just over a kilogram um, probably a little bit on the short side I would say this should have a slightly longer blade on it if I was doing that design I suspect these don't have distal taper I have to say at this price I don't see how they possibly can do but 95 pounds crazy crazy cheap so there's another option here, um, another sword, I suspect in the same functional range, but they haven't used the word functional this time, and this is the classic sword. Wow, imaginative naming there, guys. <laughs> You've got to do better with this naming. Um, so there are a few interesting things about this. First of all, it's this absolutely insane £95. Bearing in mind, this is a carbon steel blade, probably 1080 fully tempered it says so heat treated obviously and it's sharpenable so you can get for 12 pounds more you can get it sharpened uh how how for 95 pounds that is crazy crazy cheap and it looks all right it's quite nicely proportioned i would say of all of these swords to my eyes this possibly looks the the most this seems to be a new model that's just been added um and it's got multiple fullers, it's got triple fullers in the blade. Now this type of dropped down guard is something we typically associate with Scottish swords. So I would say with that blade and that hilt, I would actually call this, um, I'd call this a Scottish sword. So this is kind of like early 15th century Scottish. Um, and they could call it that, honestly. I mean, they could call, it's a bit too late in design for something like Bannockburn, so they couldn't call this the Robert the Bruce sword or something like that, but maybe if they find found someone from Scottish history who's uh, a little bit later than that, 100 years later, then yeah, you could kind of name this sword after them. Pretty nice. The only thing I would say, at 1.5 kilograms, it is not light like the others. It's a little bit on the heavy side. That being said, it's got an 82 centimeter blade which is actually fairly long for this type of sword. So, interesting option. And for £95, and that's including tax, um, if you can find some way of not paying tax, it's £79 apparently, but for normal buyers, £95, and it's in stock, limited stock, right now. That seems like an amazing option for the price. So here's an interesting thing. Now this is a one-off because it's a damaged product, so it's reduced and it's um, 190 pounds. So it is over budget, but it's below 200 pounds. And um, this is something that was worth watching out for because if you don't mind the damage that's on a particular example, various sellers like the Night Shop and Cult of Athena will offer seconds. In other words, they will offer things that have got some damage on so they're reduced. And I think this is a great deal. So this is from the Windless Battle Cry range. Um, and this is, uh, I believe it is anyway, and this is the, the called an Italian, Italian Bastard Sword. And um, uh, this 
it's all the stats look good on this. It's a nice long blade, 85 and a half centimeters, pretty long, 1.17 kilograms, pretty light. Uh, and I've heard good things about the Battle Cry range. It should be 1080, they're well heat treated, they're sharpened. Um, so that seems like a really good option for 190 quid. And it looks sort of uh, early, fifth, early to mid 15th century in style, I would say. No, um, yeah, about that. Um, so interesting um, option. And just as a general, look out for seconds. If you're on a budget, look out for seconds and damaged because it might be damaged that you're not bothered about or something you can fix yourself. So here's a slightly different option. This is windlass made, and this is the Model 1850 Union Staff and Field Officer Sword. So an American Civil War era infantry officer's saber. It's modeled incidentally on the French um, saber that went before it. Um, sort of a combination of features of the 1822, I think it is, or 21, 21, and the 1845. But anyway, um, it's a saber. Um, 978 grams, it's a good weight, 76 centimeter blade, it's a bit on the short side, but French and American sabers were for infantry officers, but 159 pounds, so it's pretty close to our budget. Um, and honestly, with a scabbard as well, I think that's, uh, you know, pretty damn good package. And the night shop offer a sharpening service, so you can have this sharp and you can cut water bottles with it to your heart's content. So, and these are traditionally made, although it's a curved blade over 50 centimeters long for people in the UK. Um, these are traditionally hand forged, windless, hand forged everything. Uh, so there's no questions about the legality of that. Um, and you can buy it directly from the night shop right now. And it's in stock. It seems like pretty good value to me, although I've not personally seen this sword. It's not going to be a perfect replica of an antique, of course. It's not going to be as good quality as an antique, but £159, you've got a functional sabre with a carbon steel hardened sharpened blade. So here's another option to consider, what you might not have expected to be on this list, it's a spadroon! <laughs> and um, you know, I don't hate spadroons as some people have uh, suggested, spadroons are spadroons, they have their own qualities. Um, and this is the 1840 non-commissioned uh, US uh, US Civil War era, essentially. Well, obviously the 1840 is pre-US Civil War, but it was in use in the US Civil War and went out of use pretty much straight after it. Um, so these were carried by sergeants uh, primarily. And um, yeah, it's a spadroon and it's windless. So it's gonna be 1080 steel, um, pretty decently heat treated. It's got a scabbard with it. As you can see, they're steel scabbard as well. I think the originals usually had leather scabbards, but anyway, uh, steel scabbard, uh, brass hilt, peened, full tang, blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, um, uh, 800 grams, it's a spadroon, so it's gonna be lighter. That's probably slightly on the heavy side. Although that being said, I've had a couple of these as antiques and they are actually quite heavy for spadroons, so wouldn't worry about that. But 112 pounds, it's out of stock at the moment, but available um, for pre-order. So, but 112 pounds is really cheap, I think, if you want a spadroon. And it's not different, it's not, hugely different to the British 1796 infantry officer spadroon. So it's quite similar to swords that were used in the Napoleonic Wars as well, and all the way up to the US Civil War. Um, so another interesting option from Windlass there, and I think really good value. So again, here's a somewhat uh, surprising and unexpected uh, find for 141 pounds, so under budget, uh, although currently out of stock but available for pre-order, is the windless Russian Shashka um, Cossack Sabre, which at one kilogram, just over one kilogram, and an 82 centimeter blade. Obviously, it doesn't have a handguard, so that cuts down on weight a bit. Um, an interesting option. Um, I have never owned a Shashka. I've handled many, many antiques, um, but I've never, as far as I can remember, owned one. Uh, comes with this correct type of scabbard. Um, and there you go, it's got wooden grip and brass um, hilt fittings and brass fittings on the scabbard. Uh, you may love it, you may hate it. It is a very particular type of sword that elicits all sorts of feelings in people. I would say, from a critical point of view, it doesn't quite look the right shape. Um, I'd want to put it side by side with an antique one. The hilt doesn't, the line of the hilt doesn't look quite right and the blade, the curvature of the blade doesn't look quite right. But there's a lot of variation in Shashkas. So, you know, and it's fairly cheap, 140 quid. Um, it's pretty cheap for um, this type of sword and it's gonna be decent steel, gonna be decent heat treatment. And for 12 pounds extra, you can get it sharpened if you want to cut things up with it.
So I've hopped over to Southern Swords uh, website now and I noticed, I don't know why I didn't notice this one before, uh, but it's the practical Tai Chi sword. I think I'd assumed it was a blunt, but actually um, it comes sharp. Um, so ready to cut with. And for £140, it seems pretty pretty good value to me. Um, so I'm not entirely sure from the website whether it is in stock or not. Uh, so you'd probably need to contact Southern Swords to check. Uh, but nevertheless, it seems like a pretty good option to me. Um, it's got yeah 28 inch blades, quite typical for a um, uh, Gien. And they call it a Tai Chi sword, but it's, it's a Gien. And um, yeah, it's Hanway, so you know it's gonna be decent steel quality and heat treatment um, almost all of the time. And uh, oh, there are, oh, that's interesting, 28, 30 or 32 inch blade. And yet there's only one add to cart option. Ah, oh, blade length, ah, oh, wow. So that's really, really interesting. I didn't know that. So for 140 pounds, you can choose your blade length as well. 28, 30, 32. You pay three pounds more uh, for the 32 inch blade. Pretty interesting. Um, and you actually pay more for it to be blunted. So it must be made manufactured sharp and then Southern Swords can blunt it on request. But anyway, another good option if you're interested in Chinese swordsmanship, 140 pounds, difficult to beat that um, and it's, uh, a pretty faithful representation of a 19th century Jian. So here also on Southern Swords, I found an option I didn't know was a thing, um, but this is made by Windless. Um, so this, they've recorded this, they've called this the 1860 Heavy Cavalry Officer's Sabre. Uh, newsflash, there was no heavy cavalry in the United States Army. Uh, they just had universal cavalry, essentially light cavalry. Um, so it's actually the 1860, it's just the, the cavalry officer's sabre. And it is the officer's version. Um, you can tell the difference between the officer's version because it's got these uh, decorative elements and it's essentially a copy of the French um, light cavalry officer's sword sabre uh, of 1822. Um, so uh, for the most part in the 19th century, the Americans just copied French um, sword designs. And it's even got etching on the blade. Look, it's got the secondary Montmorency fuller um, it, with the full steel scabbard with decorated, it seems really good value to me. Um, obviously I've never seen one of these in the flesh, so I can't, vouch to how incredible it is in the hand or quality or anything else but 145 pounds is seriously seriously cheap and it's only just over one kilogram so the weight is about correct 86 centimeter blade um and let's have a look you can sharpen it's 25 pounds so it is more expensive to sharpen but for 25 pounds more that's still only going to push it up to 170 pounds um you know that's that's pretty good for a sharpened sabre. I don't know what the distal tape is like, I don't know what the accuracy is like, I've never handled one of these. And I've just noticed uh, the heavy model dub the old wrist breaker. Okay, there's some confusion in the description going on here. The light version was popular, but the heavy model dubbed the old wrist breaker. So the, the heavy one is the 1840, it's a different model <laughs> sabre. So I think there's some confusion there. Uh, but nevertheless, if this is the 1860, then it's, so sometimes in US swords, they refer to the 1860 as the light and the 1840 as the heavy, but that doesn't refer to light and heavy cavalry because they didn't have light and heavy cavalry. Anyway, that's the subject for another video. Um, £145 unsharpened, for another £25 sharpened, seems pretty good value to me. Oh God, I don't want to like this, but I sort of like it a bit and I sort of hate it in equal measure. It's the, the, the sword from the 300, the Spartan sword. Um, and this is priced at £192, so it is over budget, but it's still under £200. And uh, it's made by Windless, so it's gonna have a 1080 um, hardened steel blade, um, but, uh, you know, looking at this, this is made for the movie fan aficionados and uh, I suspect that it's not going to be a hugely pleasurable um, experience trying to use this sword. It's not got a great designed hilt. Not the fault of Windlass or Southern Swords, that's the fault of the movie um, people. Um, and the blade is sort of supposed to be inspired by a Falcata, I'm sure, but it ends up looking more like some weird kind of falchion. Anyway, it is what it is, and maybe you love that movie and maybe you love that sword, so there's another option for you to consider. 
So here's another option which is pretty much bang on budget, £151. Um, and this is what they call the American Revolutionary War Sabre. And it's based on an example from uh, Newman's book, um, which is a sword that may have been used um, during the American Revolution by revolutionaries. It's got a nice scabbard, leather scabbard with steel mountings, typical windless style. This is windless, so it's going to be 1080 heat treated blade. Um, and the guard looks a little bit square and blocky. Um, it's not a beautiful sword, I don't think. But that being said, it's a simple knuckle bowed saber. So it's going to be probably quite an effective sword. And if you sharpen it up, so it's £25 more if you want it sharpened by Southern Swords. But nevertheless, there's another option to consider. And yeah, it looks like a pretty decent sword. And for the, for the price, I think really, really good. Um, so if you want a simple hilted knuckle bowed saber, there's a good option for you. And here's another option which uh, some of you might love, um, and it's the Assassin's Creed Sword of Ezio. Um, and, uh, full disclaimer, I've never played any of the Assassin's Creed games, actually. Or maybe I have for like five minutes, but I've never owned one. And um, yeah, it is, you know, it's a fantasy design saber. Maybe it really, really appeals to you. But honestly, if we look at the stats, so this is windless. It's carbon steel, hardened, um, you know, tempered blade. They don't give the option to sharpen this one, which I'm not sure why. You'd need to ask Southern Swords about that. But uh, 0.93 of a kilogram, that's pretty light, 930 grams. Um, 78 centimeter blade so the weight and stuff seems fine and actually if we look at the design of the sword itself I don't love it um, it's not based on anything historical I can think of um, but it's a slightly curved saber blade of a almost of a sort of katana like cross section and then with a knuckle bow that doesn't reach all the way to the pommel and a, and a strangely phallic forward pointing pommel um not my taste at all but some of you out there who love assassin's creed might love it and at, at this at this price um what is it 150 pounds pretty damn cheap actually and as far as i can tell it looks like the one from the game um and presumably it you know it's functional carbon steel it could be sharpened it could be used for cutting bottles uh, or you could keep it blunt and hang it on the wall uh, so there's another option for about 150 pounds so here's another interesting one i found in the windless section and it's called the battle of nicopolis which was 1396 if i remember correctly uh, between various european uh, confederation burgundians and french and i think there were some italians there and germans uh, fighting against the turks um, in nicopolis um, 1396. Now this is an interesting sword. So Windus, 168 pounds. That looks really nice. Uh, I'm not so sure about the grip, if I'm completely honest. Uh, but the blade looks nice. It's a sort of type 15, I guess. Um, so <laughs> it's. Uh, I imagine if it's windless, it'll be 1080 steel um obviously hardened heat treated um it says it is fully functional 32 inch blade two pounds two ounces don't know why this one's listed in pounds when the others are listed in grams uh so you can get the edge sharpened for 30 pounds i don't know why this one's more expensive to sharpen maybe it's something to do with blade length um but Let's have a look at this. So fairly typical sort of the budget range for windless uh, scabbard. So it will be a basic leather scabbard with steel shape and um, locket. The guard could be a bit more defined. I'm not a love. I don't really love the shape of the guard. That could be improved. The blade, however, looks nice. Looks good. The blade it looks like it's got a little rocasso going to the guard there. I'm not a big fan of the shape of the grip. That could be changed. But the pommel looks really quite nice i like the pommel and this will be peened solid construction so i've got to say for 168 pounds that looks worth a punt to me that looks like a pretty good option again from windless so you know that it's going to have pretty decent uh you know steel and heat treatment and it's going to have a, a traditionally forged blade and it will have a um, for, um riveted uh, construction traditionally made hilt so that looks pretty good to me for £168. So here's another interesting example. I'm not familiar with this sword at all. This is on Southern Swords and this is called the Bra Black Marauder Rapier. I find that difficult to say for some reason. Um, and it says it's commonly out of stock but available for pre-ordering. And 134 quid is pretty damned cheap. Um, so this is 
A rapier in the looser sense of the word in that it's more similar to the rapier shown in Joachim Meyer's treatise. So most of us would refer to this more as a side sword, but that being said, the blade is quite narrow. It's quite rapierish and it's got quite a long ricasso on it from the look of it. Uh, and with a scabbard. Now, interestingly, I noticed in the description, this says 1065 steel. As far as I was aware, Windlass always used 1080 for everything, so I don't know whether that's accurate or not, but 1065 is okay, it's lower carbon content, but if it's well heat treated, it's fine, it's quite durable. 1080, same kind of, so it's not a huge difference between 1065 and 1080. Um, but nevertheless, so it's a 32 and a quarter inch blade. So I think personally, that disqualifies this as being referred to as what I would normally think people would think of as a rapier. It's a bit too short, and the hilt's rather simple. This is, however, a side sword. Um, or you could say it's a German rapier, which indeed is the same word as rapier, just to confuse matters. But nevertheless, a good option for £134. They don't seem to offer a sharpening service for this, though I'm sure if you contact Southern Swords directly, they will um, offer that. Um, but yeah, another option, and this is below budget, one to consider, I think. So here's a more left field suggestion, the classic Greek hoplite sword and scabbard. So uh, this is in many ways a precursor to the Roman gladius. Um, obviously this is Greek uh, hoplite type sword. Now, it doesn't look like it's incredibly historically accurate to originals. Uh, it's more of a kind of impression of one. So I'm not going to say this is hugely historically accurate. Let's have a look at the stats down here. Uh, it's a blade of 55 centimetres. It's relatively short. It's about the same length as a wakasashi in the blade. One kilogram. So it's mm, uh, maybe a bit heavy for a sword of that size. But that being said, Looking at the design of the hoplite sword, it does have a metallic guard and pommel. So one kilogram for a short sword is not hugely heavy. It's maybe a little bit on the heavy side. Um, and it's got all of the stats here. Uh, interesting, so it does have some distal taper. It says the blade thickness at the base of the blade is five millimeters, and the blade thickness at the center of percussion is 4.5 millimeters, which isn't much of a distal taper, but it's something. You actually don't need an awful lot of distal taper on a short sword. But anyway, £154, so it comes in at around the right budget, windless, and for £30 extra you can get it sharpened or you could sharpen it yourself. Um, so Southern Swords, the Greek Hoplite Sword, another one to consider. So here's a fun and different one to consider. Um, this is from Conan the Barbarian and this is Valeria's Sword, which I always loved the look of, not just the sword, actually as Valeria as well, but it's a, a very, very cool kind of scimitar in the fantasy style. So it's essentially, it's sort of the same, similar proportions to a Chinese Dao or uh, even, I suppose, almost a wakizashi with a pommel or a short katana. Um, so the blade length is 66 centimetres. The weight, however, is 1.8 kilograms. Now, I have to say, if you compare that to the other Conan swords, that's pretty light. However, compared, compared to real historical swords, that's rather heavy. Uh, but if you love Conan, and I've got to say for £169, so this is over budget, also to note it is currently out of stock, but it's available for um, back ordering. So uh, Southern Swords, Conan Valeri Sword, £169.99, so £170. They don't give a sharpening option here, but I'm sure that that is potentially possible. Um, it's, it looks just like the sword from the movie. Um, so it is what it is. If you like uh, that Conan, uh, if you like the Conan swords, this might be a good option in this price range. So here are a couple more options on Southern Swords from Windless. One they've titled the Confederate Cavalry Saber. I've got to say, I'm not a big fan of this and I've never seen a Confederate Cavalry Saber that actually really looked like this. But that being said, American Civil War Sabers aren't my specialism, although overall 19th century Sabers are. So um, I, it doesn't look quite right to me. But that being said, just as a sword, given that we're comparing here with not very historically accurate swords in some cases and fantasy swords as well, movie and game swords, just as a generic saber, it looks pretty decent. And if we look down at the stats, uh, you know, 0.86 kilogram, it's pretty light. It's the weight that it should be with a blade of 86 centimeters. I suspect that the blade, so we can see down here, it does have very slight distal taper, but it probably doesn't have a lot of distal taper. So I suspect at this length, the blade might be quite floppy. There is another sword right here, which we'll look at as well 
which is listed as Confederate Sabre. And actually, although this is um, not very good looking sabre to my eyes, this is actually quite similar to certain Confederate sabres I have say, seen. So during the American Civil War, the North had most of the factories, so the South had to make what they could with what they could and, and import from Britain and other places as well. Um, and this does kind of look like a Confederate States version of the 1860 sabre. Um, so it looks kind of right. Let's have a look at the stats down here. So just over a kilogram, it's about right, 86 centimetre blade. So that's another one you might want to consider. Again, it's out of stock, but available for back order. And for £25, they do offer a sharpening service as well. Now, here's a sword I've stumbled across, and I've actually, I don't think I've ever even noticed this one before. Um, I certainly don't remember it. So this is made by Windlass. It's not currently in stock on Southern Swords, but they say that they can uh, back order it. And it's a pretty good looking sword and not a type of sword that I realised that there had been a replica made of and indeed not one by Windlass. So they've described it as a Dutch East India Company cutlass. In fact, what this is more loosely is a 17th century Dussac or Tessac as it's sometimes called. Um, so this absolutely would have been used by English, Dutch, Germans, French, all sorts. Um, this could have been found American, you know, this would have been found all over a whole sweat, anywhere you found Europeans, you would have found these types of swords. And uh, it seems to be a pretty good representation. I don't like the grip, although the grip's just basic wood, and that could easily be wrapped or carved or covered or changed or whatever. But actually, it has a pretty decently shaped um, short sabre blade with a knuckle bow and a rear quill on of the right shape and a side shell and, and a little pommel cap. And it looks really decent actually. It looks not dissimilar to a lot of the basic Dussacs, you actually, antique ones, you actually find from the 17th century. So if you want a pirate sword, rather than getting a later period cutlass, I've done videos about this, this is actually a really great option from the sort of golden age of piracy. So, you know, late 1600s all the way through to 1720, these swords absolutely would have been in use. Uh, just have a quick look at the stats, 71 inch blade, so it's not long, but it's not short. Um, interestingly, the uh, blade thickness is only listed at the base of 4.3 millimeters. That's maybe a bit on the thin side. I'd ideally have it more like six millimeters, but these were churned out. They were the cutlasses of their time, so they were mass produced. Um, and some of them didn't have very much distal taper, although they should have some distal taper. I suspect this doesn't have any. Uh, but sharpened up, and for £25 you can have it sharpened. This should be a really good cutter, even for something like, like a, using it like a machete for backyard clearance. Um, so this is £185, so it is a bit over our budget, but it's still well under £200, although obviously if you get the sharpening that will push it up to just over £200, but seems like a pretty good sword for the price. So here's another option that appears quite decent, uh, they call it an English falchion, it's not specifically English, it's not based on any um, surviving example, um, but it's windless, so it's going to be pretty good steel and heat treatment. Um, it's a falchion of a style which you see in the first half of the 15th century, I would say, from that pommel. So that pommel is sort of 1400 um, onwards. And it's a type of blade you see in manuscripts. It's not, it's not close, this isn't close to any uh, surviving example that I have seen, uh, but it does look quite like ones we see in, in manuscripts. And again, it's got a basic leather um, scabbard with um, steel or iron uh, fittings top and bottom. Uh, let's look at the stats. 55 inch blade is fairly short uh, and one kilogram. So it's, it's not light. It's probably heavy-ish for its size. Uh, but yeah, it looks decent for 140 pounds. Appears to me to be a fairly decent, um, fairly decent buy at that price, and it will be solid construction, hand forged, peened, uh, blah blah blah. So um, you know what you're getting with Windlass, and usually it's pretty reliable um, quality and. and very good value at this price point. So here's another example. Uh, this is on Southern Swords from Windlass, and um, it should be mentioned, uh, Windlass obviously import all over the world, but they seem to get models to Southern Swords that they don't necessarily get to other manufacturers. So Southern Swords have a close relationship with Windlass. Um, so if there's a specific Windlass sword you want to get, then Southern Swords might be the people to speak to. Um, and this model I've seen in pictures a lot over the years, and I've never seen one in the, I think maybe I saw one in the flesh years and years ago, but I can't remember what I thought of it. Um, but it seems 
on paper pretty good. It's based on a um, probably German or Swiss Sabre in the Wallace collection, uh, which is A716 in the Wallace collection catalogue. And um, yeah, it's not, it's not a perfect replica, and I think it probably doesn't have as much distal taper as it should have, but it's £175, okay? Now, if you want to get that sharpened, it's £25 extra. Okay, so we're up to £200 now, so this is over our £150 budget. But, just to flag it up, that for £175, it looks like a pretty decent sword, and I think it probably is. Again, it's windless, so it's going to be 1065, 1075, 1080 carbon steel, something like that. Uh, with pretty good heat treatment. And 1.15 kilograms with an 85 centimeter blade sounds absolutely fine. It's the same kind of weight and heft as, a, as an arming sword, but in the shape of an early saber. And this is essentially a 16th century, um, or actually 17th century. Uh, let's have a look. 16th, 17th century? I'm not actually sure, but let's say around 1600. Uh, I think it's 16th century um, sabre, or you could call it a long de sac, I suppose. So an interesting sword, another offering in this price range. Another one to consider on Southern Swords is the, from Windless again, the Oakshot Type 12A Longsword. Now this looks to me like one of the swords that was maybe designed for the Kingdom of Heaven uh, production. If you didn't know, Windless made if not all, I think I think they made all of the swords, or possibly most of the swords, in Kingdom of Heaven. Um, and hence, you will find Kingdom of Heaven swords made by Windlass, because they have the rights to those designs, I think. So, um, yeah, this, this looks pretty decent. I'm not sure what's going on with the grip. The grip's a little bit um, odd, but who knows? Maybe it's very comfortable, I don't know. But the pommel and the cross look decent enough. And the blade looks quite nice as well. It's a 92 centimeter blade, so it's fairly long. 1.49 kilograms for a long sword, a bastard sword, that's not bad. Um, the thickness, it doesn't have any distal taper. They've been honest about that. Well done, Southern Swords. So four millimeters at the base, four, four millimeters at the um, center of percussion. So the blade is gonna be probably quite floppy at that length with no distal taper. Um, you know, but then again, it's 149 pounds, which you can have blunt at that price, or for 30 pounds extra, you can have it sharpened. So, there we go. Um, it's another option on the table that you could consider. So, here's an interesting one it's the Persian Shamshir, <coughs> and um, this is over budget. This is 195 pounds, which, if you then get it sharpened, will be another 25 pounds, so it'll be 220 pounds. So, it's actually in percentage terms, of course, way over budget. But I want to flag it up because this is a sword that I have handled and seen, and it's nice. Um, I won't say it's the most historically accurate or anything like that, but as a basic simulator of a uh, Persian um, Shamshir. It's, or even possibly even Ottoman as well, and swords like this were used in India as well. It, it's it's a pretty good uh, it's a pretty good option. It's not currently available from um, Southern Swords, but they can back order it. Um, usual windless steel. It's light as well. But look, 0.67 kilograms they've listed here, and it is a very light, quick sword. So one worth considering if you can if your budget can stretch to it. So again, here's a windless long sword. Uh, this is listed at 185 pounds, 185 pounds on Southern Swords. If you wanted that sharpened, that'd be 30 pounds extra, double edged. Um, <clears throat> so obviously that would push it over the 200 mark. But um, the main reason I'm mentioning this sword is it looks really, really nice. Uh, and is pretty damned well made actually, but it has some design issues um, and I have actually handled this sword, I knew someone who had this sword for quite a while and it is floppy, it is really really floppy and the reason is, we can look down here on the stats, blade thickness at the base of the blade 4.5 millimeters, blade thickness at the center of percussion still over four millimeters, 4.1 millimeters. So essentially it's got almost no distal taper, very little distal taper. Uh, 1.44 kilograms, so it's neither heavy nor light, but the blade length is 96 centimeters. So the resulting blade is essentially pretty floppy because it's long with no distal taper. That being said, sharpened up is not a bad cutter. So it can still work, you can still work with it, and also to say there are some historical swords, um, including long swords, that do have fairly floppy blades. If you look at real claymores, real antique claymores, two-handed claymores from the 17th century from Scotland, they 
almost always have pretty floppy blades. Um, so there we go. It, it, you know, it, make of that what you will. <laughs> it might be to your taste, it might not. It is a pretty good value package. For 185 quid, you're getting a lot of sword for your money there, and it looks really cool, really nice, and you can use it for drilling. They're pretty strong, good quality steel, good heat treatment, but they are a bit on the floppy side. So here we've got a Gladius. It's the Pompeii Gladius from Windless, and this is on Southern Swords again, 165 pounds. So it's pretty cheap. Um, what I would say is, um, Windless do a number of Gladii, <laughs> Gladiuses, and um, none of them are really perfect to my eyes. They could, they've clearly got the capacity to make a really good Gladius, but they need some, uh, some help with the design. Maybe I will help them with that at some point. But um, this does offer good value for money, I think. Uh, you know it's gonna be decent steel, heat treated, which it has to be said a lot of budget Gladii are not. There are other makers, I won't sort of mention them, but there are other makers that are selling essentially soft steel bladed uh, Gladii, which are not really up to much use. This, however, will be, I imagine, 1065, 75, 1080, something like that, uh, carbon steel, heat treated. There are some designs with the, uh, sorry, there are some issues with the design. The two main things I really don't like about this sword are the ricasso area with this big flat uh, section at the base of the blade that makes it look like a Feb and Spikes dagger. Otherwise, the blade's perfectly fine. I just wish they'd treated the, if they'd run the midrib down to the base, it would have looked better. Um, and this nut, it looks like, this brass nut at the end of the pommel. As far as I'm aware, no Gladi ever had that at the end of the pommel and it really sticks up high and is really unsightly. If it was half the height, it wouldn't bother me so much, but it just sticks up like a stalk and I really dislike it. I might be wrong, maybe there is some original example which has that, but I don't remember seeing one. Anyway, 165, if you want a Gladius, I think that offers pretty good value for money and you could modify it, you could do some work on it, make it more how you like. Um, and it wouldn't be, because it's a fairly short blade, 51 centimeters, 77, uh, sorry, 0.77 kilograms, so 770 grams. Uh, decent weight. Um, so, you know, another option to consider. Now here is a really cool sword to consider actually. So um, again, I wasn't really aware that this was currently available, uh, but it seems to be available on Southern Swords at the moment for 178 pounds. So it's over budget for our 150 target, but it is below the 200 mark. Um, obviously, if you get it sharpened, it's single edged, so it'll be 25 pounds extra from Southern Swords. So that will of course push it over the uh, 200 pound mark. But that being said, this is a loose replica, a loose interpretation of the Thorpe Falchion, which is a real English 14th century falchion. And this is a reasonable impression of it. Um, it, it is not gonna have much distal taper, um, which is one of the things that will be lacking. That being said, not all types of sword always have loads of distal taper. It's 1.2 kilograms, so it's not overweight. Looking at here, it says uh, the blade, <laughs> I think this is wrong. It says blade thickness 4.2 millimeters at the base and then blade thickness 4.4 millimeters at the center of percussion. I don't think that can be right. That can only be an artifact of uh, rippling in the blade or um, incorrect grinding or perhaps incorrect measuring. But nevertheless, uh, this is essentially a flat slab blade. So it's not got distal taper to speak of. That being said, it will still function as a falchion. Uh, if we were gonna make a better version of this, then I haven't studied the thought falchion personally, but I can almost guarantee it will be thicker at the base of the blade than it is at the center of percussion. My guess is it will be about five millimeters thick at the base of the blade, maybe even six, and it'll probably be about three millimeters thick or even less, maybe two, um, out towards the center of percussion. So, it's not perfect replica, it is, you know, but it is a sub 200 pound sword at the end of the day. So I actually think, at first sight, it looks like a pretty decent replica and a really good value replica for this money. So another good one to consider, and who doesn't love a falchion? So here is a really interesting Sabre replica, and one that I'd not really noticed before. So this is the uh, windless replica of the USM 1906 Cavalry Sabre on Southern Swords. It's currently out of stock, but available for back order for their next windlass delivery. Now, 
The reason this is so interesting, so the 1906 is essentially an update of the 1860 uh, model Sabre, so it's not functionally very different to the earlier 1860. But what's really interesting is looking down at the stats, assuming these are correct, and obviously I can't independently verify this because I don't have one in hand, 1.1 kilograms, that's fine for a cavalry sword, it's got a long 88 and a half centimeter blade, but here's the interesting thing, blade thickness at the base, eight millimeters, Blade thickness at the center of percussion, 3.8 millimeters. It's got distal taper. Not only has it got distal taper, but that sounds like about the exact right amount of distal taper for this type of cavalry saber. So for 179 pounds, and that's blunt, if you have it sharpened, it'll be 25 pounds extra. Bear in mind, these sabers were issued to the military, in, whether in Europe or America, blunt originally. So that is historical. To have a secondary bevel sharpened edge applied to these is perfectly historical for this period. If that's correct, and if the actual sword lives up to those stats um, of 1.1 kilograms, 88 millimeter blade, and with starting out off at 8 millimeters at the base and tapering down to 3.8 millimeters at the center of percussion, well, it looks like we might have a sub 200 pound saber that actually is proportioned like an antique saber. Very, very interesting. So maybe check that one out when you can. So through Southern Swords and uh, I think a few other retailers in the UK, you can get John Barnett brand swords. Um, and I'm only mentioning them here really to unfortunately recommend people don't get them um, and the reason for that or rather let's qualify that statement it depends what you want if you want a sword to wave around and um, you know just for fun or you want to hang it on the wall fine uh, go for it get a John Barnett but if you want a functional sword if you want a sharp sword to cut with uh, if you want a reenactment sword I'd really really recommend against John Barnett swords Number one, uh, because the blades are soft. I'm not, I'm not gonna make categorical statements about them, but I get the impression that they have used spring steel, but they are not heat treated. Uh, but anyway, they're soft. That's the first issue. The second issue, in some ways, an even bigger issue, is they are almost always horribly overweight crowbars. And this example here, the 13th century war sword, it looks great on screen, okay? Um, you know, if that was made by Windlass or it was made by Hanway or Kingston Arms or one of the other kind of, you know, makes that make relatively affordable swords, I would be like recommending this. I'd be saying it looks like a good sword, blah, blah, blah. But then you look at the stats and the fact that I know it's John Barnett um, and you look down at the stats and it's 1.8 kilograms. 1.8 kilograms is a heavy long sword, and this is an arming sword, it's a one hand sword, so it's really overweight, really overbuilt in the blade. The only thing I can say for John Barnett swords is sometimes they have quite nice, relatively nice for budget hilt fittings. So if you're doing a project where you want some specific hilt fittings, like a basket hilt or something, or a rapier hilt, then you might find that buying a John Barnett sword purely for the hilt might be worth the while, and I do know people have done that. But overall, I would not, oh, 115 pounds, good looking on screen, arming sword might seem super tempting. I would say, save your money, save up a bit more money, and you can get something far better as a sword, far better functional sword, for a bit more money than this. So here's a sword on uh, Southern Swords website that I actually don't know anything about, which is, it's slightly disappointing there's not more information on the product page, um, because it actually looks pretty nice. We just had a look at it here. So they've described it as single-handed Renaissance sword. So it's essentially, it's a side sword. Well, it's an arming sword with side rings, essentially. So it's the, in theory, it's the sort of sword that would have been carried in the middle of the 1500s, let's say 1530-ish to 1560-ish. Um, and it could have been carried on the battlefield or it could have been carried by, you know, soldiers or, or civilians. Um, so it's, it's an interesting type of sword, not one that's massively replicated. There's a design feature here with a sort of nut sticking up on the pommel, which is a little bit uh, disconcerting. The grip looks quite nice. It looks half cord bound and half leather bound, which is a bit curious, but the blade looks uh, a little bit, the, the taper could be a little bit more subtle and, and improved and stuff. But then 
I want to go and find out more about it, but it's their own brand, so brand Southern Swords. So Southern Swords has obviously partnered up with a manufacturer. Uh, I don't know who it is. Um, I don't know whether it's Windless or someone else. Um, and they, the blade length 83 centimeters, the weight 1.4 kilograms. It's a little bit on the heavy side for this type of sword of that size. I'd expect it to be more like 1.1, 1.2 kilograms. Uh, but they don't tell me anything about the steel or the the steel type or the hardness um, so I'm left a bit in the dark and um, they offer a sharpening service so presumably it's carbon steel um, but uh, yeah we just we just don't know we're guessing a bit so I'd quite like to know more about that sword because it's quite intriguing and it's only 135 pounds very cheap um, but what it looks like it looks like you're getting good quality for the money but I don't know so really just to give a shout out to Barrington Swords. They've got a bunch of decent stuff and for more expensive swords, they've got some options and plenty of options for knives. But really, I am not finding anything that I would personally recommend for swords in this price category that I can see. Uh, there's some of the Honshu offerings which I'm not sure that I can honestly recommend. They tend to tend to have stainless steel blades, I believe. Let's just look at the Honshu Spartan. So it is, it's only 112, 113 pounds, um, but it's, uh, let's have a little look down here. It's United Cutlery. Yeah, it's a stainless steel blade. I'm not really sure that I feel comfortable recommending that. It might be fine, it might be your thing, but I don't think that um, I will be recommending it here. There's some nice, uh, there's a cold steel Bowie knife, which fits, we've got Hamway again, which came into the category. There's there's Blunts, there's Kingston Arms and uh, Hamway Blunts, which come into the right price category, um, but everything else really is over. So check out Barrington Swords, but there's nothing really that I can recommend for this particular category here. So I'm just looking for options on Blades UK now, uh, which is another website you can check out for yourselves. Um, and Blades UK, uh, to my way of thinking, do quite a um, big turnover in Japanese style swords, but they have branched into, I would say, branched into more European style swords recently. Now, they've got a couple of swords here, which I believe are their own brand, which have been made for them. I don't know who they've been made by or where they've been made, my guess is that they are Chinese made from the characteristics of the um, scabbards and the just general, the look of them rather than Indian made. Um, they are listed as having hand forged 1075 high carbon steel blades, stainless steel pommel and cross guard, leather wrapped wooden handle, traditional, traditional peen tang. Now they don't say sharp here, but my understanding is the, uh, these are sharp. So they've got one that they have called the professional longsword. It's not an amateur longsword, it's a professional longsword. And that's 139 pounds, which you've got, to, you know, that's cheap, okay, for, for um, a functional, sharp, carbon steel bladed uh, longsword. Um, and I have heard, they don't put any stats here at all, so they don't put weight, okay, they put length, but that's about it. They, they, they don't put uh, length or balance or thickness at the base of the blade or anything like that, which is a shame. Uh, if we click on more info, let's see if we get any more info there. No, we get nothing more which is really disappointing because I could potentially recommend these if they just gave us some more information. So Blades UK, you need to up your game giving information for your products, I think, if you want people to recommend them. But um, I have heard on the grapevine that these are pretty good, that they make pretty good cutting swords, um, if these are the swords I'm thinking of. Um, and they look pretty decent, fairly nice pommel, bog standard uh, blade and grip. I'm not a big fan of the guard, but it's okay. It looks a little bit like a budget Albion Talhofer, doesn't it? Um, but £139 is pretty cheap. Now, they are out of stock. Um, I think they've got another model up here, which is £189. Same type of steel, slightly maybe an updated design, quite possibly. I think it looks like the same sword, but perhaps with an updated grip. Um, so £189, pretty good value, stock due in October. It's now November, <laughs> so uh, I don't know whether the stock's arrived or not. Uh, the website could do with an update. Um, I've got to say Blades UK website is pretty old school and they could probably do with the website update at some point. 
Just looking through other options, they do have some cheap stuff on here, but nothing that I would particularly uh, recommend um, as a functional sword, as a sharp sword for cutting or anything like that. They've got some Witcher themed swords, they've got a bunch of movie swords. Those really are the um, only two that I have seen so far that are particular to Blades UK that I would necessarily recommend. There's nothing else that I'm seeing here that isn't already been mentioned. Hanway, uh, cold, they've got Cold Steel stuff, incidentally, Blades UK. They've got some good offers on Cold Steel stuff, but it's outside of the uh, price constraints for the purposes of this video. Now let's have a little look at the North American situation through Cult of Athena. Now, obviously, there are other options in North America. There are people who are particularly specialized in HEMA training weapons like HEMA supplies. Uh, shout out to my friends there. But I just thought just to look at one American site which has got loads of stuff on it. Let's have a look at Cult of Athena who also have their own brand Balor Arms. Um, and I have done some reviews for Cult of Athena. And of course, you can anywhere in the world can order from Cult of Athena. So you don't have to be in the USA. You could be in Canada. You could be in Australia. You could be in Europe and you can order from Cult of Athena. So let's have a look and see what swords they've got available that might be different to the ones we've seen before. So when you look by pricing on Cult of Athena, the first thing you'll notice is if you look at price low to high, then you'll find lots of Deepikas, um, which are Indian made, uh, Indian manufacturer, at the bottom end of the price scale. Now, I usually uh, don't recommend Deepikas for anyone who wants a functional sword because Deepika by default are not heat treated. They are made of carbon steel, but they are not heat treated. However, speaking with Cult of Athena, it's my understanding, and you'd need to check this and make sure yourselves, so don't take my word for it because I haven't independently verified it, but my understanding is by special request, Cult of Athena Deepika swords are heat treated. Um, so they should be more functional than Deepika's you buy anywhere else. Although, as I say, I haven't independently verified that, so you might need to check that with, you know, you can ask Cult of Athena, message them yourselves. So if we look at one of these options uh, here, so this is under $200, the Gothic Longsword. Let's have a little look at this puppy. So, yep, this is based on a, a sword which Deltin used to make a famous replica of. Um, it's in the Royal Armouries, I think, but it's known now to be a 19th century composite, so it's not, although it's an attractive looking sword, it's not actually an authentic medieval sword. Uh, but nevertheless, let's have a little look. This is a stage combat version, so it's not really what we're looking at here. Specifications quite heavy but not crazy heavy um okay it seems to have distal taper as well right let's go and have a look at uh, these are all stage combat so these cheaper ones are stage combat versions let's have a look down here this is a battle ready version um oh no but that's not i think that's a windlass um yeah pretty sure that's a windlass sword hold on uh, it doesn't actually say, hold on, description. It doesn't say who the maker of this one is, unless I'm blind, which is quite possible. Um, okay, so I believe this to be a windlass sword. It certainly looks like the windlass model, but they haven't listed it as such. Actually, it looks like a different blade cross section. Interesting. So I'm not sure who made that one. It's listed as the N45 carbon steel, which is an English... Sheffield steel categorization, but it could also be Indian for historical reasons. And it allegedly has distal taper from four millimeters down to three and a half millimeters. So not a lot of distal taper and just under four pounds, quite heavy. Okay, let's go and have a look at, uh, look for another model. Um, here's a Deepika, but that's, so this is over $200, full disclosure. So this is an Irish style ring pommel coupled with and not very typical um, cross guard for that type. Um, Gaelic longsword, they've called that. And Deepika, let's see the specifications. Uh, okay, so allegedly this does have distal taper from 6.2 millimeters down to 5.1 millimeters. That's still quite thick, could do to be thinner than that. Um, but it's a good starting thickness. It says unsharpened, um, but they do, I think, so you can, for $30, you can have it sharpened. 
let's have a look at some of these pictures. Mm. It looks a bit lumpy to me. It looks a bit kind of overbuilt. What's the weight of this? 3.29, how long's the blade? Uh, blade, where's the blade length? Oh, 36 inches. Okay, that's not bad weight actually for that. The grip looks a bit wide. Hmm, it doesn't look bad. I think I'd have to see that one in hand to know what it's like. But that's at about the $200 mark. So we're not really, we're pretty much at the top end of our, of our price bracket already. Um, and if we move up here, we're into the windlasses and the ballot arms and we're up to 300, very close to $300 pretty quickly. Um, so um, we've, for long swords at least, we've pretty much priced ourselves out of this category quite quickly. So I've been digging into a little bit deeper into the reviews um, of the independent reviews of the Depica swords. So here is an arming sword, it's described as late Viking era sword, 10th to 11th centuries. Indeed, it's got a Brazilian lot of pommel. It looks pretty decent in the photos. Nothing, you know, the guard's not a great shape. The grip's a bit horrible, um, but the blade looks okay. But here are the main criticisms I found out about this. First of all, it handles like a club. Um, so these, for a number of reasons, these are tend to be somewhat overweight. They tend to have very thick edges, so don't bother having an edge put on them because they're never gonna make a good sharp sword due to the edge geometry. Um, and even in one case, the guard was loose, apparently. So, so far, I can't really recommend at this price category, although they are cheap, $145. Um, I can't really recommend the Depica swords. And based on everything I've ever been told, never heard, heat treated or not, I think you're better just saving your money and getting something a bit better than a DP cut, honestly. So here we get into the Balor Arms range, uh, which is the range developed by Cult of Athena themselves. Um, they have used at least three different manufacturers for different things so far. So they've now doing Japanese swords made by a Chinese company. Uh, they have used two different Indian manufacturers, um, uh, Overseas Trading Company, I think they're called, and, or Overseas Trading, yeah, Overseas Trading Company, and uh, now Windless. I am not certain which of these models are made by whom. However, um, I think that this version here, which is a 40, um, Type 14 knightly arming sword, 14th century probably, or late 13th, um, and it, this has all the characteristics of a pretty decent sword. Now this is just over $200 if you choose the munition grade uh, version. Okay, so munition grade, and then if you sharpen it, it comes out at um, $225. So we're over the $200 mark, but these are pretty decent swords. Uh, whether they are um, overseas trading or whether they are windless, both of those makers have produced pretty nice swords for Balor Arms. Now, if we go back, there is another one for the exact same money. There's the 15th, so-called 15th century arming sword. Now, I actually have this sword and there'll be a full review of it coming up. But I can say for that money, it's a pretty good sword, okay? So um, I have issues with the uh, design of the hilt. Uh, both functional issues and, or rather, yeah, and aesthetic. Aesthetic and functional issues with the design of the hilt and also the attribution of calling it a 15th century arm sword, but I'll deal with that in the full review. But as a sword, if you just want a sharp sword to cut things with, this will be a good sword. It handles well, it, it moves nicely in the hand, it seems to be good steel, good heat treatment, it's got a hollow grind and so on and so forth. So honestly, for that money, I think it's a pretty decent sword and there's not much else to compete with it in this price category. So just to finish off looking at swords on Cult of Athena, for those of you who are interested in Japanese style swords, um, there are loads of options under 200 bucks. Um, and obviously they are varying quality. To some degree you get what you pay for, but there are some makes that are better than others. Um, just having a look down here, there are absolutely loads and loads and loads of options for katanas for example uh, even under a hundred dollars um, these are all obviously chinese made 
and um, you know we've got a Ronin Katana Model 8 here um, sharp edge ready to cut ready to go and it's only let's if we go standard grade there we go $139 and you know it's not the most uh, historical uh, katana in the world but it will do the job it will cut targets and it basically looks like a katana so we have to say actually the Japanese sword market particularly katanas it's I, I would like it if there were more tachi and other options out there is incredibly well served by reasonable quality uh, functional sharp ready to cut katanas under 200 bucks like really really cheap um, and it's kind of somewhat unfair in a way that we it's very difficult to find European or any other you know Indian or Filipino style swords under $200 that are kind of worth worth your money as it were um, but yeah you've got loads of Ronin Katana um, options down here um, let's go on to the second page. I've just organised this by price category. So um, the Cult of Athena website is very good for searching for things like that. Um, Zashi, again, Ronin Katana, Hanzo Steel. Uh, well, we're now over 200 bucks. OK, so but, you know, if we keep it, there's a Honshu version, uh, full tang. Um, Mizashi, there we go. Look, let's have a look at that. $168 and it looks pretty decent. I mean, it's not got the most historical shape and the Kasaki could be improved. The Ito looks quite well wrapped. The Suba looks all right. I do not like that Kasaki at all. Um, and the, you know, typical alloy Fuchi Kashira. Um, the Saya looks okay though. Honestly, this looks kind of decent baseline uh, quality Chinese made katana um, for $168 pretty damned cheap um, obviously issues with importing this into the UK um, which can be circumvented if you meet the right defenses so if you want to buy a katana and you're in the UK much easier to buy from a UK stockist than trying to import um, but there we go you can see Cult of Athena has got absolutely bucket loads of Japanese style swords um, at all price ranges including quite a lot underneath uh, 200 bucks so I hope that's been useful this has turned into being a much more massive video than I had originally intended but I'm sure that it will be useful to some people out there uh, particularly looking at swords in the 150 to 200 pound or dollar, they're roughly equivalent these days, um, value. Really the bottom end, the cheapest end of the sword collecting market, as always. And if anything, particularly in this price category, I would say sometimes you get a lot for your money, a lot more for your money just over 200 pounds than necessarily trying to spend 150 pounds and you can say dollars instead of pounds if you prefer so i think if you know sometimes if you can afford to get 150 dollar of pound sword sometimes saving up for a little bit longer and getting that 220 pound or dollar sword you will get a much better sword for your money. So it's worth sometimes saving up a little bit more. And equally to say there are a lot of genuinely really very good swords in the two to 300 um, pound or dollar range. And a lot of very good swords uh, obviously above that as well. Um, so uh, there are certain brands and makes which seem to have done very well at the sort of affordable end of the market. Notable mentions to Hanway, to Windler, um, and uh, also to the to the Balor Arms uh, Cult of Athena's own brand that they've done with various different manufacturers and it looks like the Night Shop swords are worth checking out as well um, which I personally haven't actually handled or seen them in the flesh but it's worth checking those out and also worth perhaps looking at the Blades UK's own brand uh, swords, which I've heard are pretty good value for them for their money. But they are pretty cheap. How they stack up? How do the Night Shop own brands stack up against Balor Arms? Stack up against um, uh, Blades UK swords? I don't know, but maybe that's something I can look at in a future video. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you've got any particular questions, stick them in the comments down below and maybe I or someone else, one, one of my regular commenters will have a chance to uh, help you out and give you some guidance if you need it. Thanks a lot for watching. I am Matt Easton and I will continue to be. Cheers folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks.